Hey there, good morning. Welcome to the Jeep Saw Garage. Today we've got a fairly easy project. We're going to be replacing the hinges on the windshield on my Jeep Wrangler YJ. Should be a super fairly easy project, right? Not so much. Oh boy, buckle up. So I started this project because the windshield hinges, actually the windshield frame on this project had been replaced at some point and the hinges on it, they were just actually cut off. So I needed to replace those because I'm gonna be painting this, doing a full restoration on it. So I picked up some nice uh, Rugged Ridge hinges and the reason I picked these, there are some other aftermarket ones that do not have the uh, recessed bolt holes here and I really wanted that because I wanted it to sit nice and flush kind of look OEM. So this is a little bit uh, higher quality hinge. I'll be sure to link it in the description below of the ones I got and I'm using on this project. You know, eight bolts, I'll pop those out real quick, uh, swap these in, it's not so easy. I totally forgot about the bottom part of the hinge. The bolts are up inside the dash. They have a nut on the back of it, but that's not my only problem. So the top part of the hinge here, came off absolutely no problem. There's a little plate behind here that the threaded bolts sit in real nice. The bottom section, this is where you run into the nightmare. So these bolts are a T40, a T40 fits in there real nice. But like I said, there's a nut on the back of all four of these. And that is where we want run into a big problem. Inside of your dash, they use a product called a seam sealer, which is all that white gunk and it, it makes it impossible to get a wrench onto those nuts to hold it still because that is like, oh, I don't know, like elephant denture paste or something. It is hard and not pliable. So you end up breaking these bolts loose and they just spin. Other guys had ideas of just drilling this out, which uh, would work, but then you, run, you still run into that issue. If you got all that seam sealer in there, you gotta put your new hardware in. You can barely reach up in here, especially on the driver's side, it's super hard to reach. But yes, I agree, you could drill all four of these out, pop them out, no problem. But then uh, getting the nut on the back side with all that seam sealer is still gonna be an issue. Just getting access to it, I started taking my dash apart, you saw the windshield folded down. But let's talk about why I really took the windshield and folded it all the way down and started taking the dash apart. On the passenger side, it really wasn't a big deal. Because your glove box can come off fairly easy, there's like, you know, eight little screws, your glove box pulls right out, and then you have nice, easy access to get to those bolts. The driver's side though, boy, that is a different story. There is just no access to get up to these four bolts here. Down underneath, under your dash, it's just full of uh, wire harnesses, fuses, all kinds of junk in the way. So as you can see, I took uh, some of my gauges out, some of the uh, plastic covering, just you know, all this comes off really easy. All of these uh, plastic parts, these just held on by a few screws here and there. You can pop those off. Then the gauge here, there's just one little plug on the back, couple, couple screws at the top, it unplugged right here, popped that out, and then I actually have a little bit of access here, but I, I decided to take a step further and I'm actually loosening all these bolts, taking my windshield down, took these bolts off up here so I could actually fold it down. With the windshield folded down and some of these bolts loose here, that actually gives me some room to kind of pull the dash away an inch or two and then I can get more access to those nuts. So let's continue with the same thing on the driver's side. We're gonna take these three bolts out, the last one on the uh, windshield hinge here, and then we can pull this away probably a little bit farther. So let's see how that works out. And as far as drilling out these bottom ones, these bottom four bolts, because I know I'm gonna get some comments of people saying like, you don't need to take your whole dash apart. No, 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 you're wasting your time. And yes, maybe so, but uh, there is so much of that seam sealer built up back there and I wanna scrape a lot of it off and get my new fasteners in there real nice. It looked to me like I was gonna run into problems with uh, not being able to get the new hardware in. And taking, you know, taking some of these bolts out, this is coming apart fairly easy, not a big deal. So this is how I wanted to do it. So all the rest of these uh, dash bolts are coming out nice. There's five of them all across the top here. I've got four of them out, no problem. 
The middle one here is giving me trouble, so I'm actually gonna drill it out and use a screw extractor to pull it. So let's do that real quick. <laughs> And well, that's one way to get it out. Snapped it right off, but got the job done. And I did hit all of these uh, screws with some PB Blaster. Highly recommend that. I hit it a few days ago, let it sit. Hit it again this morning, just because you're gonna run into issues with these uh, being rusted and just kind of stuck. There we go, and with all those screws removed, now we have a lot more access to get back behind there to get those bolts out. So now on the back side, let me show you. This is looking up underneath, uh, and these are those bolts we gotta get out, and you see they're just absolutely covered with that seam sealer. That's why I wanted to uh, take the dash apart because the new hardware just wasn't gonna sit in there. The nuts just weren't gonna sit in there nicely. So I'm gonna scrape a lot of that out and take those bolts out. Now I've got a lot of that uh, seam sealer scraped off so I have access to the nuts there. Got a pair of vice grips on there. And with the vice grips to hold that in place, I can get my, what is this, T, T40 in this bolt here, and we can back it off. I don't know what the deal is, but the top bolt here on the outside, on each side, on both sides, this one is extremely difficult to get out. So make sure you have yourself a uh, screw extractor kit, because the T40 on this is just stripping out. So I'm gonna drill it out. Uh, Get my screw extraction bit in there and pull this guy out. And I'll link a uh, screw extractor kit in the description below. Make sure you have one available. If you don't, you're gonna run into a dead end here. And there we go with the screw extractor. We finally got that last bolt out, so hinges off. Okay, we got the hinges off both sides, so now we're just gonna clean up a little bit of the rust here. Clean this up, uh, maybe hit it with a little bit of primer so it doesn't rust under there, and uh, we'll get our new hinges on. This uh, rust converter from Krylon neutralizes rust. It's worked really well for me on projects like this. And obviously, I'm not worried about uh, overspray or anything on it because this entire project is gonna get, uh, it's gonna get painted. This will be a sharp looking vehicle when it's done. Um, I got a call today right now. I got other stuff I gotta go run and do. I'm gonna let that uh, primer, that uh, Krylon rust converter, that stuff works really good. I'll link that below. But I'm gonna let that dry, let this project sit for a little bit. Putting the new hinges on, uh, I'll do that in a future video, but you get the idea. Eight bolts, and then uh, everything goes back in in the reverse order of how we took it apart. Uh, you will, we'll be able to catch that in a future video though anyways. Check out my next video right up here. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day. Put the wrong hat on here.